Welcome back, peeps, to Perfect Dev, where we give you cats the freshest dose of dev snacks. Now with your amazing hosts, Alex Patterson and Brittany Postma. This episode brought to you by Storyblock. Build anything and publish everywhere. Welcome back, perfect peeps, to perfect.dev. I am Brittany Postma, and today I have with me Kenny. Welcome, Kenny. So nice to have you. Thank you very much. So nice to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing awesome. good. Thank you. Yeah, and so everyone may notice that Alex is not with us today. Unfortunately, he has COVID and is not feeling very well, so he will not be joining us. But we are here today to talk about Plasmic, which is where Kenny is working now. And Kenny, do you want to tell us a little bit about your background and then how you got involved with Plasmic? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, before now, I was I worked at a, at a fintech startup in Nigeria, uh, which is my home country. Uh, so I worked as a DevRel manager there. I had a couple of people, and I think it's it's a very big company now. Uh, I think they are a unicorn now, so it's over a billion dollars worth. That is uh, awesome. Yeah, it is. Uh, then uh, I left to join Netlify uh, as a developer experience engineer, where I worked for a year and a half. And yeah. We kind yeah, of found out right before this that actually <laughs> Kenny was going out as I was coming in. So I think I was Kenny's <laughs> replacement. Yeah, yeah, that is totally correct. So okay. I, uh, you started uh, May 2nd. I think I left May 1st. So oh, yeah. <laughs> it was literally like one day we missed each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's fun. So I spent a lot of time, loved all my teammates. We did amazing things. Uh, then I joined Plasmic as the director of developer experience. It's a much smaller startup, mm -hmm. and it's uh, we're trying to build the team, build the culture, build the company uh, as a whole. Uh, so I'm very excited to be here. The tool is amazing. I've been learning it and using it, so I'm happy to talk about all of that. Yeah, that is really great. And so <laughs> what drew you? Let's let's talk about what Plasmic is, I guess, before we <clears> get into more of the in depth questions. Yeah, yeah. I think um, uh, a one-liner is that pl Plasmic is a no-code tool uh, you can use for visual page building, right? If you're building websites or you're building like full-blown uh, web applications, uh, Plasmic kind of like helps you do that uh, without having to dive deep into code and doing all the traditional way of software development that we've been doing uh, up until this time. Um, something that I really love about it is the fact that it gives you the ability to build across the team, right? So uh, it takes away some level of uh, technical dependence on engineers and spreads that out so that marketing teams or any other member of the, the company really can spring up like a, uh, a website or a web page or an events page or like a uh, an e-commerce page or like really uh, anything else that you would ordinarily go to uh, to an engineer for and have have them put it on the board and on Jira board and make out engineering time for that. Uh, it's making it possible for other team members like marketing teams to just spin that up and own the process end to end until it goes live, right? Uh, so that's something that I find really exciting uh, using Plasmic. So it's making it easier for teams to collaborate. So how is it doing that with the collaboration tool? Is it different URLs that they can use to build together? Or how, how does the collaboration actually work? It is the same URL, right? Uh, if okay. you sign up on Plasmic, you can, uh, if you sign up as a team, you can have uh, a workspace where multiple team members can work from. Uh, it has, the UI is very similar to Figma. Uh, so you can oh, collaborate nice on the same workspace, on the same project. Oh. And yeah. Uh, so it, so. <laughs> you can kind of see like the other people like working around, like you can see in Figma where you see their arrow or. Uh, yeah, I don't think we have the, the cartoony head thing that yeah. Figma currently has. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll get there. Uh, but yeah, you can work like with your team on, on the same workspace. Yes. Oh, that's nice. So it's all together in one space and then they're working on the same piece. And is that versioned at all? So if one person makes a change and another person makes a change to the same thing, what, how does that conflict? So you, you probably uh, are in the same workspace, but you're working on different projects. 
Okay. Uh, so a workspace is kind of like just somewhere where you you the entire team has access to. So if I wanted to create a project that I want the rest of the team members to have access to, see what I'm doing, or even contribute to that thing, we put it in that team's workspace and it's available to everyone. Uh, if you're working on the same thing and someone else is working on the same thing, uh, before you, so Plasmic has this thing where it kind of like forces you to version your changes. Okay. Yeah, so before you uh, ship anything, you have to ship that as a new version, regardless of the changes you've made, um, just to be sure that you're not overriding anyone else's changes or you're, you know, like you're tracking uh, oh. all your all, all the updates you're making to the code to the code base. Nice. Well, so it's not a code base at this point. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds kind of like it's automatically versioned, like to publish yes. something, you would have to version mm -hmm. it. That yeah. that's really nice. Hundred percent. So, is that one of the things that makes this unique or is there anything else that makes it unique from other no code solutions that are out there? Um, I think it depends on the, on the particular solution we're talking about, because um, like if you're looking at the likes of, uh, of WordPress or Wix or Squarespace and the rest, mm -hmm. uh, I would say they are fantastic tools. And if the fit the description of what you want to do, it's perfect for that. Um, but in that sense, um, I think what Plasmic is doing differently is that it brings a lot of flexibility into the equation. Um, because if you're using like uh, like Wix and the rest, um, you're kind of like inside this world garden uh, that limits you to the scope of what they can offer you, uh, which is fine if it solves your problem. If that's all you want, they would give you that. But if you're like a business and you're looking to basically have the flexibility to do a lot more things um you would need it to like plasmic then right because you can co collaborate you can uh you have access to code components which means you can integrate your plasmic project into an existing site you know like it, it, you're not just uh you're not limited as well to whatever the the, the platform is providing for you uh like you know your hosting providers, you're not limited to having a particular set of layouts or a particular set of plugins that you can use to get some things done. Uh, if you're on Plasmic, uh, you own your code, you can bring your data from anywhere, from any data source. You can integrate with React.js, with Hydrogen. You know, like there's uh, so much flexibility that comes with it. Like you're building a no-code tool, but at the end of the day, you still have access to writing actual code if you want to do that. Okay, that is really interesting right there. Yeah. So once you're done building in the visual code builder, and mm -hmm. are you able to like export your code? And do you get like components that you could place into? And then what languages would that support? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a very good question. Yes. Yeah, so when you're done uh, building out your tool in Plasmic, you can push it to GitHub. To be honest, you know, you can push it to GitHub, you can clone the repository and work with it locally as well as uh, as, as, as well as, you know, p pushing pixels on the Plasmic Studio. Uh, yeah, so I think that's amazing. And if, if you wanted, you can sh export it to like a React code base, PHP, Vue.js, Angular. If you wanted as well, you can pull in your <clears throat> excuse me, you can pull in your Plasmic projects into your own um, local projects via a REST API. If you wanted to do that, you can make an API call to fetch all that pages and all that data that you have uh, on Plasmic. Uh, so there's, there's no limitation to what you can do or how you can use the projects you have available on Plasmic. You can, uh, you can export them to Hydrogen, Next.js, PHP, Angular. However, like there's a list of frameworks that we currently support and there's going to be more. Uh, so that's, that's all no concern at all. Yeah, I'm going to ask about the Svelte support. Like, when are we getting Svelte support? <laughs> Very <laughs> <I'm> soon. A... <laughs> awesome. That's, that yeah, we, are, we are working on that, actually, yes. Yeah, cool. That sounds really awesome, though, to be able to kind of own your code base and build with a mm -hmm. visual editor, but then, like, have that code so that then you can add to it and do that in multiple ways. Do you know how that's working, like, under the hood? Are they using something like, I know Builder has mitosis, where you can transfer code from JSX into different languages. So do you know how they're doing the language transformation into different no, tools? No, no. I I don't, I don't know how that works under the hood, uh, but we have like a loader that helps do all of that for you. Um, okay. And we have, we have two modes for doing that, that I don't know in depth, um, 
but we have a loader and we have a cogen part so depending on how complex your app is or your or your website is whatever you're building in plasmic uh the level of complexity de decides uh the kind of the mode that we're going to use to generate that code for you so code gen is for a lot more complex sites that are using more complicated features uh, if you're just trying to build out like a small website or an e-commerce site that is not complex at all you can use the loader to do that uh maybe we can we can eventually have a more detailed resource uh, on that uh, uh, and kind of like showcase how all of that works under the hood. Uh, yeah. I think that would, that would be something. I was just kind of curious that. because that's like yeah. a lot of different languages to cover, right? And I was wondering if yeah. it's one tool that's maybe like transforming it or if if they, they actually have a tool that's doing it for each language, which probably is the case. We, so, we are doing it. Uh, we are doing it internally. Like we're not like using yeah. any external tool to yeah. So you're not exposing any of it either. It's just internal to Plasmic. No. no. Okay. Sounds good. I'm I'm sending you a link to to it though. Uh, uh, oh, awesome. Uh, yeah. We will the... uh, put that in the show notes. And mm -hmm. um, earlier you were mentioning that it it looks a little bit like Figma in the UI. So I'm wondering yeah. if you can actually import your site from Figma. Can you use any of like Figma components in Plasmic? Yes. Actually, you can import your entire uh, Figma project into Plasmic. I think I recently did a, a YouTube video on that uh, on my channel, uh, uh, just showing exactly what you asked. You know, like, uh, so you've had your design or your design team build out something for you in Figma, and now you want to code it out. Uh, ideally, you would start writing the code, you know, pull up your VS code and have your front end engineers do that. Or you can copy and paste it in, in, in Plasmic. Wow. That is really, <laughs> that's really awesome for designers too, because you're working <laughs> in Figma already and then you have your site yeah. and you can just. Yeah. And it's really as easy as I said, like you, you just. Control C from from Figma and Control V in Plasmic, and it, it will really put up all your design. And you can hit publish immediately on that and have it as a live site. I'm gonna ask you way too many questions about the internals of this, but I'm wondering: is, does it? Do you know if it uses Figma? You know how it has CSS, but it's not yeah, we, like we have a uh, we have a, a plugin, a Figma plugin that oh, you, okay. you, that you can install. Yeah, so when you install that. And then you can use the plugin to do all of the copying. So it's it's not like regular Control C kind of copying. Uh, so you use the plugin that we have in place. Yeah, we have a, if you're in Figma, there's a plugin called um, Plasmic. Uh, if if you if you if you install it in your project and you use it to copy to copy your design, you can immediately paste in Plasmic and it will just work out okay. of the box. I am looking up all of these links. I found your YouTube video that you're showing off Figma. So I'm going to add yeah. all of these to the show notes because that is just incredible. And so yeah. now I'm looking for the Plasmic Figma, Figma plugin. Yeah, I'll, I'll help you find it. I, uh, I was mentioning earlier that usually when Alex is here, I, I get to kind of sit back and just ask questions and he does all this <laughs> hard work. And now I'm just having to do everything myself. So bear <laughs> with me today. <laughs> I think I found it. Importing from Figma, and it's got the docs from Plasmic, and it's got the Figma to code plugin. Yep, so, that's awesome. it. I can actually, that's I'll it. add this to that's stream, cool. and we can show, like, this page here. So it looks like, I mean, is this your video, too? Uh, no, I think that's the oh, one no. we have on the, on the company YouTube channel. Okay. I, I think I did find yours, too. Um, this one? Yeah, that's it. Uh, okay, perfect. Yeah, cool. So we added those to the show notes. And so if you're mm -hmm. wondering how to like copy and paste this, I'm very interested in this too. Maybe mm -hmm. we can show that if if we get to that part. So, um, yeah. And then we spoke a little bit about how the code works and how you can generate, and then you get like a GitHub repo. So you could actually add your own custom React components or view components into what you already have from Plasmic. Yep. You can do that. Um, um, I think I'm kind of like also working on a, on a content piece for that as well. Um, but yeah, at the moment, if you if you built your site in Plasmic or you've done you're done with your project, uh, that's also one 
very good distinguishing feature that I think Plasmic has from other uh, no-code builders is uh, you can integrate Plasmic, the project that you've done in Plasmic, into your pre-existing code bases. Right, so you can have uh, maybe like a portfolio site when you have your blog and and all of that, and then you can go ahead and go into Plasmic and design maybe a pricing page. You can export that page and add it to your pre-existing uh, portfolio site, and it will work all the same. And if you want it, you you can also bring in React components or whatever code components that you have locally in a different project. You can bring that into Plasmic and use it in your uh, project as well. So however you want to do, it goes both ways. That is just really incredible. It sounds kind of magical how it all works <laughs> together. Yeah. So why don't we kind of look at the site and go through maybe looking at the templates or something? Do you want to talk about any of the pricing or anything before we get into that? No, I think we can dive right in. OK, awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to go over here to templates and see what we can come up with. So do you have an, an idea for something that you want to do? Um, I They all look very good to me. So <laughs> I, I, you can click on the e-commerce one. So I have a question actually about these e-commerce mm -hmm. ones. Are they hooked into an e-commerce or do you need an e-commerce like Shopify or something like that before you go mm -hmm. down so, this route? So this one, particularly the, the fun e-commerce one, um, is pulling its data. The product data is coming from Swell, which is also like a, an e-commerce store provider like Shopify. And um, if you do have a Shopify store, all you need to do to get, uh, for instance, to get an e-commerce site like this working is to just grab your, your credentials from Shopify store and put them here. And that's it. You can start pulling in data from your from your Shopify store directly into your Plasmic project. You know, um, yeah, I think it's incredible. Like we uh, we let you bring your data from wherever data source you have, uh, from wherever you, you're storing. So if you currently have a Shopify store or you have a Swell store or you have uh, some of your product data in Sanity or Strapi, all you have to do to get them working in Plasmic is to just connect, uh, get your credentials from those places, uh, set it up in Plasmic, and you will be pulling in your own data. Okay, so there's no like set integrations. You can configure it with anything that's out there? Yes, so there are integrations that we've done. So we've done uh, Swell at the moment, Strapi, uh, Sanity, Superbase, Shopify. Uh, we have a couple of integrations like that. You can immediately bring your data from there. But mm -hmm. also, if you want it, like everything in Plasmic is really written in, like it's, you can write your own components basically. So if you want to uh, pull in your data from somewhere else that we don't even have an integration for, it's just for you to write the code components within your, your code and then bring it into Plasmic, and it will fetch that data for you. I gotcha. OK. So if, if we use this one, and we don't, I don't have an account on Swale. So if I don't yeah. have an account, does it have some like demo data that we can use here? It does. Set up. It does OK. Have, so we'll go yeah. ahead and go into this one. That sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. I think if you go ahead and click on the Try It button. The Try It button. OK. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to go probably... into the studio and it's going to yeah. ask, I'm going to pull this off because I have no idea what account it's going to come up with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I I'm giving our, our perfect picks away. I'm going <laughs> 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 to. Just... Oh, Lord, I'm not used to doing this. OK, um, that account is fine. Next. Okay. Of course, it wants OAuth. Alex, you're going to have to edit this yeah. part out. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah, I should have given you a heads up that you need to sign up for that. I don't think I've ever used OAuth on this account, which is really weird that it's now asking me for this. Maybe, maybe, please work. I think it's working. <laughs> Okay, how did we hear about you through Kenny? What kind of work do you do? Developer? Oh, it's gonna <laughs> make me pick. Um, what am I in? I'm in software development, kind of. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us about your team, team name, um, Coding Cat. <laughs> name this team. 
All right. So invite your collaborators. So here's like where we could actually share this with our team. And so if I copied this and gave it to you, you could actually join this workspace with me, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. 100%. Awesome. So, and um, we don't have any emails here. So I guess send invites is not going to send anything. Nope. All right. So now we are in the studio. Mm -hmm. Configure this project's dynamic data. So this is telling us to go and to find the data sources that we want to pull from. Yep. Yep. So this is a, it's currently using Swell. Um, so if you use the, if you click on go to settings, it will pull out the, the Swell provider for you. And there, if you wanted to use your own, so right now it's using uh, like dummy Swell data coming from uh -huh. Plasmic. Uh, but if you wanted to just change it out immediately and put in your own Swell uh, credentials, that's the opportunity to do that. Okay. And that that's a nice UI that it like just has that there that you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a, an easy way to like add a different provider here? Yeah. Yeah. So if you wanted, if you click on the big blue button and scroll down, yeah, you can. Oh, I think you, I think you went past it so fast. Go up. Yeah. So those, um, uh, components packages. And then this one here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. If you, if you scroll down, you will see all the other data providers that we have. So you can, uh, you can add Strapi there. You can add Sanity there. You can add really yeah, any other design one. system. Nice. Yeah. You can also use Imbued Plasmic CMS. So we have that. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know there was a CMS too. Sweet. Ah, we do have that. So these are all the other uh, data providers that we currently have an integration with. Very nice. There's even a WordPress GraphQL API. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. cool. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to kind of see like what providers were in there and how we could add one if we had one set up. But yeah. let's go yeah. ahead and start. Okay. Editing or or what do we do in here? How do we? Mm, I think uh, you, I'm not seeing the design show up on, on your screen. It should be showing up. Do you have, uh, could you maybe refresh the page? Yeah, let's just be sure. It works with Chrome. Really? Oh, because I'm in Firefox. Okay. I oh, will open okay. it in Chrome. That's okay. fine. I run into this all the time. I use <laughs> okay. Firefox as like my daily browser and then lots of apps are complaining about it. Wait, and now I'm not signed in. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Again? Oh, well, this one was already signed in because I'm on the right account, which is uh, one of the nice things about Chrome. Reference error, mm -hmm. plasmic, commerce, common. But the... Designs are here now. So now I am in a kind of familiar setting where it does look like Figma. Like you said, it looks like we're mm -hmm. working with these individual components. We've yeah. got the list on the left here. Mm -hmm. And so we could go in here and we could change this, add to cart. Yeah. To you can directly edit all of that. So it could say by now. Yeah. Very nice. Uh -huh. So it's the same feeling that you have in, in Figma where you just push things around, make edits, change things. If you want to bring things in, you could easily uh, hit on that button to bring in whatever else you want to bring in. And and we have the mobile view by the right. Uh -huh. uh, so it's kind of like also give you an idea what it looks like on mobile so you can do a responsive first uh, design as you're working with it. Yes, which is very nice that it gives you that. And then I had a menu open that was asking if, oops, I just did record. I didn't want to do that. There was a menu here where it was asking, yeah, about vertical stacks. And I was wondering mm -hmm. if that would like change the layout, but it yeah, doesn't so seem. Yes, yeah, so depending on, on, on the, the stacks you choose, uh, it's basic CSS layouts. Uh, so if you get a horizontal stack, you placed in side by side. If you get a vertical stack, you two placed in above the other, mm -hmm. uh, just in that manner. Gotcha. That is really neat. So how would we go about taking this, getting this onto GitHub and Okay, there's a there's a hit there's a blue button top the right. Publish the kind publish of behind one. this. It won't let me get rid of this. And I guess because we haven't set up our own um integration uh, here. The the custom one. I yeah, but 
I think it's shrewd regardless. So let's let's try to publish. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go to publish. And now uh, you can publish to GitHub, like I said. So if you scroll all the way down and hit push to Bob to push to GitHub. Okay. Then push you GitHub. connect a GitHub okay. account to it, which will authenticate this one's, you. Yep. <laughs> all the two auth, OAuth stuff. <laughs> no yeah. verification so requests found. Why? Can to you? It, to it. it didn't work. Maybe now I need to find it. Oh my goodness. This is just painful. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Authorize Plasmic. Mm -hmm. And then let's see. We're going to go to mine. That's fine. And install all repositories. So is it doing multiple repositories for this? No, it's just doing one. Okay, interesting. Yeah, one repository for this. Okay, so enter the name. So coding cat store. Nice name. Uh, does this need to be um, hyphenated or it can probably just be this? Yeah, it, 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 at this point is uh, uh, GitHub's, uh, GitHub is going to take over. So if with a hyphen or not, it's going to create the repository with a hyphen for you. Okay, so I, I was interested here because I saw the framework and so the drop down. I guess this probably okay. depends on the template that we choose, whether it has it written in a different language, right? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Okay, I, so, I see. Yeah. So we'll do Next.js and we'll do uh -huh. TypeScript and the loader, which is recommended. So this, you were talking a little bit about the yeah, loader. Yeah, this is the one I was talking about. So uh, for this project, as it's like very simple and it's not integrated into any code basis yet, it makes sense to just use the loader. Okay. Uh, if that's not the case, you go for the code gen. And then you can publish the site right on Plasmic. So they're also a yep. hosting provider. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you put a domain name. Coding cat store. Got site. You save, save the repository Plasma. information. Yeah. So when this is well, when the site is pushed to GitHub, uh, GitHub Action is going to kick off uh, and then deploy it also for you on that domain, uh, which you would now see at the top right, coding cat store or plasmic the site. Yeah. Uh, but that's not uh, going to work yet because we haven't uh, deployed. Okay. Perfect. So yeah. Now um, push. You can as... push. Do you want to just make commit directly to main or create a different branch and send the PR, just giving you an option to do whatever. Yeah, so we we'll just do it. Main. Yeah, uh -huh. for, for the yeah. demo purposes, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please don't push directly to main when you're changing <laughs> your actual sites. <laughs> Definitely um, don't do that. So, so let's uh, publish that. Okay, so we don't need any of the webhooks or publishing uh -uh. a website down at no. the bottom. If you so. wanted, you could uh, publish as a website and uh, the difference is you wouldn't get access to the code base. Uh, oh, okay. You, you would just publish the site for you and give you a live URL you can access it from. Uh, but we are pushing to GitHub. Gotcha. Okay, so now it looks like it saved a new version, which we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier, how it versions every single publish. I'm um, yep. pushing and deploying, and now it's saying view on GitHub. So we have mm -hmm. our build so running. This, yep, 100%. So the GitHub action is kicking off. It's going to set up a job. Uh, set up Next.js, set up Plasmic, and deploy the site. And yeah, we should uh, get a URL when it's all done. That is really nice that it's got this dashboard. It feels yeah. very familiar to kind of like the Netlify flow where like mm -hmm. we have the deploy. Yeah, it's very similar to, to uh, the Netlify deploy log, uh, if you're looking yeah. through it and how it's building all the sites. And I, I think it still has some level, some kind of visibility back in the Plasmic Studio. If you look at the, the bar, you would still see the steps uh, that it's taking. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, there. yeah. So it's got a little <laughs> bar here too, so we yeah. can see it on both ways. Yeah, showing you uh, the, the steps. Yeah, so it looked like this one was only written in React. So mm -hmm. the templates have probably been written by people in those languages, and that's why we yeah. were able to choose. But if you were building your own site and yeah. you wanted the code exported, then you would also mm -hmm. get a choice of like which framework you wanted to use. Yeah, yeah. And um, and even though it's written in, in, in Next.js, um, there's... Um, 
uh, when the site is deployed, I also show you the option that you have to integrate it to your view site, for instance, for instance, you know. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can, uh, I'll, I'll show you that. Okay, yeah, we're gonna wait for the build to finish here. Yeah. It's gonna yeah, take at this it a point, couple it's, minutes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, GitHub uh, doing its thing, uh, building the site and getting it up. So it actually publishes to GitHub pages. It doesn't mm -hmm. publish to, so Plasmic isn't actually hosting it. It's just pushing it no. to a GitHub pages site. Okay, yeah, that makes on, sense. So are yeah, these on, static sites, even though it's using Next.js, is it statically generating this? It is statically generating this um, because of how we've built the site, but of course you can do dynamic things however, however you want. So once you yeah. get your next JS site, we could like clone the repository and change it from like yeah. get static. Which we can do, which we can do right now if you want it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's completing the job. So it looks yeah. like uh it's almost done. Uh-huh. That was so I long. think it's done. Complete job. And where would the link be when it's all top, done? Top, top oh, right. Right there. Uh, yep. Yeah. That one. Oh, and there it is. It's live. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was <laughs> really cool. <laughs> and that's so fast. Yeah. It is. It is and a nice. fully functioning like e-commerce site here too. Like mm -hmm. yeah. let's see if we if we do that. So I guess I may be not fully functioning because if I do, I click the because this was an add yeah, to cart yeah. button. So that this I is edited. just a this is just a template uh without any functionalities yet. Okay. If we wanted, we could have added all the button functionalities before we deployed. Um so but if yeah. we went back over here and like you wanted mm -hmm. to, could you show how to add, like, is there a way to add that functionality in Plasmic itself? Or do you have to use the code to do that? You can add uh, the, you, you know, like this button at the moment is just uh, designing the UI. You can turn it into a link that leads somewhere. Um, yeah, like I think if you, even if you click on it, uh, if you right click on the button, you should be able to see an option that, says convert to a link. Convert to a link. There it yes, is. that's one. Yeah. Okay, it's now a link button. Mm -hmm. So if you look, uh, if you click on uh, on the destination for the link, you can set uh, which page you would like it to redirect to. Where's the destination? At? I'm not seeing that. Hang on. Let me. I mean. Um, just look at the, my, your left, your right. Uh, no, not there. You, you're done with that. Just look on the other side of the screen on those. Yeah. Right. That side. So you see, uh, I think you find a href attribute as well as, uh, um, oh, right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you, you set that to like a different route that you want it to go to. And so it would link to your car if page. Yes, if you want to link to your cat page, you want to use the href attribute. Uh, close the close the project settings on your left, I think. Um, collapse it. Mm -hmm. How do I collapse then, it? Yeah, yeah, you already did that. So oh, find okay. the button. Yeah, pull it out. Uh -huh. Then find the button. Click on the button again. Yeah, click on the link, the link button. That's the one this above. One? Oh, mm -hmm. this. Okay. Yeah. So now come back to the uh, href uh, so now you have the history of attribute and you have destination. No, all, go back up a little bit. Yeah. Destination. Click this. Yeah. So this is where you link to other pages in your in your site. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. So for instance, if you have like a cart page here, you would see that page show up as an option uh, in that field. It will have a slash cart uh, and that would uh, link to different pages. I, uh, where you went I mm -hmm. clicked into that and it, when you click down, you like you can add in extra HTML attributes if you need them, it looked like. So they're they're like all yeah. listed there. Yeah. Very interesting. So, you, I mean, if you had a cart page, like you would type you would in. Show, you would show up here yeah. and then you just select that. Uh, gotcha. we, we could make one if you want. Okay. Um, okay. So can, can you copy and paste similarly to how Figma works with holding... Alt, it's not working for me. I was hoping that it was going to work where I could just drag it and duplicate it. You can duplicate a block. I think okay. if you right, uh, if you right click, uh, you sh you should get the option to do a particular block. I think you're selecting the root. 
Oh, yeah. So I don't want to do the whole entire page. I need to do something inside mm -hmm. of it. Let me see if I can help out with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you copy anything, you'll be able to paste it again. Oh, I okay. think the entire route, yeah. Not paste an artboard here. Where do I need to be to paste an artboard? Let's... Adam, uh, maybe create, uh, hit the big plus button. Mm -hmm. Maybe add a responsive column or any vertical column anywhere. Have you added that? No, it should be. Uh, it should be at the end of the current root. So that root, yeah, if you scroll all the way down, I think that's uh, no on the design itself. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's. I think it's going to add it for you at the end of that particular design. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you can like add in a different mm -hmm. column there. Yeah, yeah. But and then, to add like a new page, because this isn't a if new. If you want to create, yeah, if you want to create a new page, you can just click on the plus button, uh, not the big blue one, the other one before it by the side. <laughs> yeah, so you see new, a new page. page. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but... yeah. So you can make a new page, uh, a cards, and you can also create oh, a can... template if you want. That is really nice. Can you search yeah. through these or? Oh, let's... You can. Yeah, uh, but I'm not sure we have a cart page uh, template there. Yeah, but I was just you looking for anyone else. something uh -huh. different. Yeah, this there one we... looks good. Okay, so now we have a cart page. So now we so can now... go. Uh -huh. So if you go back to the home page and go to the destination for the button. Oh, come on. It doesn't want to select on the right thing. There we go. Link. Destination. Now we can go to slash. Now cart. you can go to cart. Yeah. Got it. Okay. <laughs> and so now that that actually goes to a new link, and we publish this again, it will set off that GitHub yeah. action again and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go through all of the steps. Mm -hmm. So, so start it, start it over, and then it would ask you to uh, version it. Now you have to uh, add a new version. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Do you have to do the review all changes or can you just bump? Yeah, you can just go ahead, uh, give it a new version. Oh, it, it won't let me uh, type in there. So looks like, how do you bump it? It doesn't let me, this isn't an editable field. Oh, hang on. Let me in. Um, added cart. Button. Tags are optional. Push as a commit to main. Maybe I just needed to go through this and select all of that. And it, it looks like 001 is the version. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's going to yeah. automatically. So it's going to automatically version it for you. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, it, it forces you to version it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> to avoid conflicts. I wonder how it detects if it's like a minor, a patch, or a major. Yeah. Bump. Oh, so one. <laughs> Once you make changes to to previous version, you're gonna have to uh, publish it as a as a new version. Okay, so it just mm -hmm. bumps it to. Mm -hmm. Right now it's one point Is it gonna be one point oh point one or is it gonna be two point oh? I think the next one is gonna be two point oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's not like Simvir. We're not doing like traditional versioning uh, here. No. <laughs> We're just no. getting like they're just making sure that you're not. We're just making sure that you don't. Yeah, you don't break your own code. That makes sense. I I think this one is probably. Oh, is it done already? No. It's still hmm? setting up the job oh, it's on GitHub. It's not job. showing yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Setting up, pushing updates to CDN cache. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, GitHub uh, takes its time, especially when it's deploying a site. Uh, I think they have like something on the popover. Uh, you may, no. Like gotta... uh, so now that's showing up on, on GitHub, finally. Uh, 
I really like this. So I just wanted to kind of see the flow of like adding a change uh, and then going you can, through. You, you can currently do that. If you click on the on the preview button, there's a big green button at the top, right? Yeah. Oh, so yes. now we can see our changes and mm -hmm. the functionality isn't isn't there yet, but we could go to the cart route by. Yeah. So if we click on this, it's not actually going to the cart, but once the site is deployed, hopefully it will take us to this new route that we created. Certainly we'll Let's do that. Let's see where we're at. My mouse just like got lost on my screen. There we go. <laughs> I love when that happens. I have it gigantic so that I can see where it's at and then it still gets lost. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my uh, little thing from Plasmic though. That's telling me when it's going to be deployed. So maybe it's oh. done. Can, nope. can you, can you check uh, if it's done on GitHub? I think this is where it was at. So is it, can you, Go back to Plasmic. Let's see if that's working. Uh, hit on publish again. Oh, there we go. So it's completing yeah. the job. So it's just taking a minute for GitHub pages yeah. to get. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's go to the repo and actually see like what we've got here. We've got a Next.js site. It's got... Mm -hmm. Oh, this is interesting. So it's it doesn't actually have, it's just got a dynamic route. So it's got the yeah. plasmic host and then a dynamic route that's just pulling in each of the routes that we created in plasmic. Yep. Now, if you wanted to uh, kind of like create your own components, uh, we have a plasmic init.ts file uh, under root where you can um, like register your own components, pass in your own props for it. And uh, yeah, that's, so this is, yeah, all the sites is basically coming in from your line forts in there. Yep, the Plasmic Canvas host. I can probably zoom this in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, um, so that's where- um, That loader you... that we chose. So it's using the loader to load in it's all of the Plasmic the... data right here yeah. in the root of the app. So yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so did we have something else we want to showcase? Do you want to show like how to use other components or anything else we want to talk about with Plasmic? Um, if you wanted, we could uh, maybe uh, add a component of our own. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's show how to do that. So okay. I'm going to go to the root and um, we need to clone it locally. Is that? Yeah, that is correct. Okay. So I'm going to copy that and I will open up a new VS Code instance over here. And we will do get clone, paste that in, and cd into coding cat store and open that up in a new window. Now I can. Actually, we'll just minimize this for now and I will make this big. So now we have our repo locally. We can go ahead and install our dependencies. Using yarn lock by default, and I just use NPM. Oh, uh, say. So <laughs> I think that's going to give us problem. Maybe not. Let's, let's see. Let's see what happens. I, I don't <laughs> yeah. know. NPM run dev. Like it might be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> That's okay. Hydration failed because the initial UI does not match what was rendered on the server. That's an interesting yeah. error. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is an interesting one. Maybe React can... hydration error. Maybe just get rid of it. Like, are you fine, React? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love React. I mean, it, it seems to work. There's just errors. I, mm -hmm. Let's see if we click that. Yeah, nothing's actually working. Oh, there it goes. OK. Just takes a while. Oh, did that work? Yeah, it did. Nice. It's taking us to the cart route. So it's working. OK, so we want to show how to bring in our own component to this. So do we want to create mm -hmm. a new component? Um, 
Yes. Okay. So what I want to do first is show you how to. Um, where is my recording? Maybe I'll move us down here so okay. it's a little bit bigger too. Mm -hmm. So if can can we already run this locally? Yeah, this is running locally. It's just it's got some hydration errors. I lost my mouse again. It's going okay. crazy. Mm -hmm. So it's got this hydration failed because the initial UI does not match what was rendered on the server. I wonder why that is. I don't think this has anything to do with the, the YAN, the NPM that we use NPM. Yes, so we can just go ahead and, and, and show you how, uh, how to use it locally. Yeah, it uh, seems to be to working work. regardless of that error. So I don't know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so if you look at the plasmic init.ts file. Plasmic init.ts, okay. I was just, mm -hmm. I yeah. saw that there was an error in the terminal too, so, or a warning. Oh. So maybe it has something to do with this. Let's see what that actually says. Whoa provided a value prop to a form field without an on-chain on -chain handler. So maybe because some of the dynamic bits of this are not set up, mm -hmm. that um, those components that it's bringing in are breaking because they're not mm -hmm. they're just correctly there's set up yet. No, yeah, there's no on, for instance, on this one, there's no on-chain handler for the, for the form input. So that is, uh, that is a valid error to, to report. Okay, so, but it seems to be working. So we're just going to, trudge along and see if we can get. So this is the plasmaconet.ts file and mm -hmm. we're bringing in that loader again, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And we've got our API keys. Yep. And if we go all the way to the to the bottom of the page, uh, you will see uh, the last line we commented it out. Uh, this one down you... here, register yeah. component. Mm -hmm. So if you uncomment that, that's where you get the opportunity to register components of your own. Okay. Uh, so if we had a component, maybe we can actually create one. <laughs> Let me send you a gist. Yeah. Um, yeah, of the one that I recently used for, for the video that I did on YouTube. Let me see if I can find the chat box. Okay. Okay. So copy that. And... It doesn't matter where I create this, right? I'm just going to create it. Uh, you can make a component folder, yeah. And a new file called what is this? A can be a nav. A nav mm -hmm. Paste. And okay. Mm -hmm. So we've just got like kind of a traditional nav bar that we're pulling in here to showcase a component that we could pull in. And yep. to pull that in, we're going to come back over here and register mm -hmm. that nav bar component. So yeah. So if you just type nav. Uh, yeah. I think it's going to auto input that for you. Uh, no, not not with the. Uh, this the is GitHub Copilot. Oh, okay. Uh, you, you can get rid of the of the of the string. No papers. string. So just a. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to import that component for you. Yep, it did. Uh huh. And then the second argument to that is going to be um, if you. It's going to be uh, an object that will take the name of the component. And it's nav, so Copilot got that part right. And then what, <laughs> and, what's the... <laughs> and then the next one is going to be props. props. Uh, yeah, if, which is also an object. So if you go back to the component itself, you would see the props that we're passing in. Um, so we're passing in children, height heading, and class name. Okay. Children, mm -hmm. So class. here we can specify children. And this is going to be a slot, uh, just a string. And slot. Oh, not shot. Slot. Uh, yep. Okay. Like that. Uh, and, height heading. Oh, height heading. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's, it's populating these things for me. And what is this one? It's a Boolean. Okay, so we're typing each of these, telling it yeah, what types yeah. these should be, and then the class mm -hmm. name was the last yeah. one, which is a string. Uh, yeah, you can you can leave that one out. Uh, Plasma oh, okay. handles the class name for you. Okay, perfect. 
Mm -hmm. uh, um, so the slot is like it just creates this container where you can throw things inside inside of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's very similar to Svelte. Svelte uses slots for like children, basically. In React, is kind of what React uses, but yeah, slot component is just a place for the data to go, right? Fantastic. Uh, so we, I think we have created this component. So if you save this, hopefully uh, the the um, hydration thing doesn't affect us. So go back to localhost and um, do we need see if anything is broken. Refresh. We haven't imported it anywhere. Do we? So by registering it here, is it supposed to automatically put it somewhere, or did we? Yep. Yeah, just registering it there makes it available to Plasmic, so it knows what to do with the with the new component. Uh, Would it know where to put it? No. So we have to put it on the on the Plasmic Studio ourselves. Oh, okay. So now yeah, that it's I, registered. Uh-huh. So go to, uh, on the local host, if you go to forward slash Plasmic uh, dash host. Plasmic dash host. And mm -hmm. enter. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Your app is Your ready. App. Fantastic. So if you copy that URL, uh, the one currently on the uh, address bar. Yep. I, I copied it down here. There's a nice little copy button on that. <laughs> okay. That okay. also works. Yeah. Uh, then we can go back to Plasmic Studio. Oh, no. Where did I put it? I got rid of all of my uh, uh -huh. windows. So yeah. it's Plasmic. Um, and then how do we get back to the student? Oh, that's not what it is. No, I, it's plasmic.app. App. And then is it mm -hmm. slash studio? Yes. Oh, but it didn't work in. Um, oh, I think you were using a different browser for this. I was. I was using Chrome. You're right. Mm -hmm. So it should be that one. There it is. Uh huh. So here you can, uh, if, if you hover over the project name, I think you're going to see three uh, icons. I'm not right sure here. what those icons are called. Yeah. So uh, click on configure project and then uh, add in the, the host URL that yeah, we copied I, I think here. I, I, uh, I copied over it. So it's localhost 3000 and then it was slash plasmic dash host. Yes. Right. Confirm that. Uh, it's going to reload. Nope, it broke. So uh, check, confirm that the Plasmic is running locally again. Yeah, it looks like it's still running. Um, still got localhost 3000. No, it's it's kind of stuck now, isn't it? So let's try running it again, mm -hmm. and then refresh this. Nope, refuse to connect. Yeah, I think I think the uh, app is not run. Yeah, try running three thousand. Let's see what happens. Or oh, maybe the hydration thing is is affecting it's the causing some issues. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, if if we had time, we could we could use a different template for this. Um, do we do we have time to do that? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's go back out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Make a new project, and we can use the landing page starter on your far right. Oh, uh, okay. I see. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that one uh, would work as we expect. Because this one's not trying to pull in that dynamic data from a cart. Mm -hmm. So okay, yeah. so let's we do the publish again. Um. Yep. Yep. Let's do that. Push to GitHub. Connect to GitHub. And I'm already signed in this time, so that was that was great. <laughs> okay, so this yeah. one's gonna be coding cat. <laughs> Oops, we don't have to. Uh, Okay. Yeah. To show to show how to pull in the the custom com component, though we 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 would not we don't need GitHub for that, so we can do without GitHub if you wanted. Okay. 
Do you, do you okay. want me to exit out of this or do you? Um, I, I mean, whichever works for you. If you want, you can exit. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's show how to do it inside of uh, Plasmic then. Uh, oh, you know what? You won't get access to the code base without uh, pushing to GitHub. So yeah, let's, <laughs> let's finish what we already started. Okay, public um, coding at landing page, save repository info. <laughs> You're publishing for the first time. Select to commit to main and publish. Yep, that's and it. Just, um, get rid of that one and that one and that one. Mm -hmm. And while that is building, and I'm actually going to control C out of this. I'm going to CD back up. And that way, once this is done, I will be able to get it um, back into the local directory. So we yep. don't need this anymore, this anymore, and this can come over here. And let's open Chrome back up. There we go. Slowly getting the hang of this. It's been painful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've got all the experience you need from this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have so many windows open. I don't know what is happening anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, this is it, this is tough. Uh, I I shy away from it all the time. Yeah. I would say, <laughs> yeah. And Jason makes it look so easy to do, though. Jason is such oh a professional. He's just like. He's got it down pat. I mean, I think he's done like <laughs> something like 500 episodes of Learn With Jason, mm -hmm. though. So I think maybe practice. Maybe I just need to practice more. Yeah, you and I both. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing yeah. my own live streams, too. And for those, I think because I know what I'm doing. So I've got mm -hmm. like my stuff kind of where I need it to be. Yeah. I, I've got those down pat, but I'm not used to doing it for perfect dev yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Having all these accurate. different things. Maybe I should have <laughs> just stuck with uh, Chrome right away. Mm, yeah. I feel like I everything's forcing me to go back. Chrome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I use Edge uh, at the moment. Yeah, I do. And I'm very happy with it. I think Jason uses Edge too. Yeah, he uses Edge. Yeah. That's a, a popular one lately, and there's all these new ones. It looks like it's complete. Mm -hmm. There's all these new ones that are popping up, like ARC and mm -hmm. several new ones. Um, okay, so it's just taking a couple of minutes for GitHub pages to actually, like, populate the link. But once that's yeah. done, we will be all yeah, set. Yeah, you can click on, on, the, on the link at the top right here. Yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be ready for oh, us to nice. use now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we can do is get this uh, locally as well, just like yeah. we did before. Uh -huh. So this one, get Chrome. Yeah, hopefully we don't have any hydration errors. <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, cat, uh, landing page code. I'm going to leave that one open too because we're going to need, actually, we're going to need this nav bar, right? So I'm going to copy yeah. mm -hmm. this entire folder. Where's copy? And yeah. I'm just going to paste that in the root of my app. Okay. So now we've got that. I can X out of this one, make this mm -hmm. big again, and we're going to MP. Should I? I don't even know if I have yarn installed. You can just try and find out. Okay. Yarn not found. No. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's NPM the way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I haven't used yarn, I don't think, in like two years. I, don't know oh why. I, I actually use PMPM for most of my day-to-day -day stuff. I don't even use NPM much anymore. Mm. Okay, Makes so sense. NPM uh, ran. Now we need to do NPM run dev. Get local host back up. Yeah, it opened in Firefox. So <laughs> local host 3000. There we go. Okay, so no hydration errors. Perfect. Huh. We need to go back into the plasmicanet.ts file and we need to do mm -hmm. the same thing, which I didn't copy from that one. So let yeah. me go back and copy that store and go back down here and just copy this whole 
no copy and we'll paste that there it's not imported it didn't do the import because i didn't yeah um and it's from components now yes save okay and now you said we need to um go to plasmic host is that right yes that is correct slash host and yeah your app is ready to host the studio so you can copy that uh url in the address bar and then head okay. over back to the to yeah back to the studio and configure the project configure project and then paste there and mm -hmm. confirm yep and fingers crossed yeah <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, okay. So yeah, looks like it's working good. So if you now uh, hit on the big blue plus icon and type in nav in the search bar, you should see good component nav. Yes. So that is the one we had locally. And that and put it... it. I think it put it all the way at the bottom of the, of the page. And, and we can just, uh, I was trying you to scroll... Just... Yeah, you can drag it from the sidebar as well if you want. Oh, okay. So I could put yeah. it all the let's way to put the it top. right under the other one. Oh no. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you click on it, uh you will see that you get all the all the props that we passed by the side. Uh so if you toggle on hide heading, the big hide head my heading thing will disappear. Where is hide heading? Uh, if you click on the on the nav bar, mm -hmm. then by the right, by the right, uh, what is it I... called? Yeah, yeah that one. heading. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So nice. It, yeah, yeah. So the boolean is hiding this heading yeah. here if mm -hmm. if it's checked. Awesome. If it's checked, and then if we if we had like other routes like a cart for instance or about and home and all of that if you clicked on those buttons on the on the nav items it would redirect you to those pages because that functionality is coming from the from the code components that we had written locally so that would just walk out of the box awesome yeah uh and the slot is just somewhere you can drop whatever you want you can add an image and and the text or whatever so if you click on the right uh, there's there's a plus button uh yeah yeah just right there that one so okay. you can add text add images add whatever else and it will just show up okay this is text in the slot <laughs> yeah and so I, I guess the last piece of this is how mm -hmm. do we get this stuff back into our local repository so how does that work so if you just publish this. And then we select as just review changes, do a commit to main, it's fine. Publish again, mm -hmm. it'll set off the job again. And then so that change will be up on GitHub and we'll just have to pull it locally. Fantastic. And that's it. So boom. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> and I, I think with that, I'm going to switch us back over and we will go into our perfect picks. <laughs> Perfect picks. I didn't say it as as good as Alex does either. <laughs> All right. So let me get our perfect picks back up here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I have no idea what perfect picks is, by the way. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> so perfect picks are just fun picks that we like. They can be tech, they can be movie mm. shows, anything that you really like enjoy and want to mm. share with the community. So we usually do like a tech pick and um, I will let you go first. So I have it here. I'm gonna share that back. And this is your pick. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is my pick, yes. <laughs> yeah, you wanna tell us a little about what this is? Fancy uh machine. Yeah, I I'm sorry everyone who's watching this. I I <laughs> I didn't know I was supposed to pick a tech thing. I no, 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 it doesn't have to be tech. This is perfect. This is exactly ah. it's anything that you like. Okay, I I love this. I love this. So yeah. this is 
appropriate then um yeah it's a dji uh, uh mini 3 pro drone that i love i i like flying drones uh like taking pictures because i like to travel so when i do i i like to get a higher bird view of the environment and take fun pictures of that yeah uh, it's really fun yeah uh unfortunately it, the drones are currently banned in dubai which is where i live uh so i can't use it use it at the moment have you which tried sucks. it at all yet i've been flying it inside the room <laughs> i've been so yes. just inside your house you've just been testing <laughs> yes that I is amazing i oh my god that i still have fun with it i, I guess you still have to you have to have a way to see if it works right so you have yeah. to figure it out and and i think mm -hmm. you said that you are going to get to take it with you because it's lightweight oh, yes. right yeah i'm traveling to to croatia next month and I I can't wait to take it with me. I oh my god, I'm oh, going to have I've heard so Croatia is beautiful it. too, so you're going to have to oh share some god. of the images that you get it, with it. It is amazing. It's lovely. I I was there last year for the same conference that I'm going for again and I had so much fun. I went to Dubrovnik, which is the scene where they shot the Game of Thrones movie and all of that. Oh, it was wow. Yeah, it was amazing. Oh, that sounds so awesome. And you were sick. So Okay. Well, my pick is uh, a stream that I did yesterday, my first live stream for Netlify. Um, I had Tim Binnix on from uniform.dev and we did creating a composable site with personalization on the edge. On the edge. Is, yes, I know. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen a few of your sites about the edge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I, I love the edge. <laughs> I, I do too. I love the edge. But what is the mm -hmm. edge? Salma, right. one of my other colleagues, actually did a talk today for more serverless on what is the edge. We're all living on it, but what is it? Mm -hmm. But what what is what <laughs> really what is it? Really is the edge. But it was fun. We went through two hours, so it was a very long live stream. But we did an entire demo of like working with Uniform and how to add in personalization. And it was kind of interesting because he had serverless functions that were on Vercel, and we were hitting those with Netlify Edge and grabbing those serverless functions so we were even able wow. to like use multiple services and show how it works together so it's really cool yeah i'm definitely watching that <laughs> but thank you so <laughs> much for joining us kenny it was so nice to hear about plasmic and it looks like such a cool tool to be able to actually like have your code and edit it and then have ownership of that too like so you mm -hmm. are able to pull it down and still have those visual tools for marketers and other people yep Yeah, so I I think it's uh it, it lets people who are developers still write code if you want to do that because I think one of the popular limitations that we've heard about no code tools is eventually as your product grows you're going to need code and when you do need to write code you can do that. But Plasmic allows you to do that. You know, if eventually you want to write your own code, you can do that. Uh, otherwise, anyone else can just spin up a template and have your side out. Yeah, awesome. And we kind of showed how to do all of that today, how to do it inside of Plasmic and then how to create mm -hmm. your own components and load yeah. it up at least through the next JS app. So yeah. but thank you so <laughs> much for coming on. This was so much fun. Thank you very much for having me. We'll see you later. All right. Bye. Bye.